Hi everyone, my name is Milka Rimmer. I'm a summer educator from Madison Audubon and I'm one of the educators working to run the Forces of Nature summer camp. So we're currently on round two and we are talking about hearing and sound this week. Last week we talked about sight. The week after we're going to be talking about our sense of smell and the week four is talking about animal superpowers, so all of these wonderful senses that animals have that we can't even begin to understand. So we'll be talking about all these wonderful things. Um, it's worth noting that even though we have already started camp, it's still possible for you to join in. So all of our materials are online and it's completely free. I can drop a comment in the chat below this after I finish the event and that way you can get a hold of all of the cool programming we've been doing. So the subject of our talk today is bird calls, and I'm going to be running through a lot of really fun facts about bird calls, like why and how birds call or use alarms, um, why and how birds can make the sounds they do, talking about their anatomy a little bit, and then lastly we're going to be going over some, some backyard bird calls, and we'll talk about some of my favorite birds to listen for whenever I'm around the Madison area or even around my home. And yeah, I think that's that's all we're going to cover today. So it's also worth noting that if you are watching with us live, I would love to see any comments or questions or even some nature stories from our campers. I'll be able to look at them most likely at the end of our lesson here and see if there's anything that we'd like to share. So if you're watching, I'm really excited. Have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know and comment and I'll try to get back to you when I can. So we'll kick off with the why. Why do birds sing and why do birds have alarm calls? So the let's talk about songs first. Songs are kind of what birds are famous for, right? If we go outside and we hear this kind of long winding melody, that is a bird song. And they really have two main uses. So the first one is usually to attract a mate. And the songs are all really individualized or unique for each species of bird. And they use these songs to communicate to other birds that they are available. <laughs> Let's say that. Um, and these songs are usually pretty long and complex, which makes them unique and also it is. It means that it's usually a male bird singing. So if you hear a long and winding song from a bird, it's most likely a male. Um, it's also good to know that the second reason that birds may use a song is to protect their territories. So like I've said, since bird songs are so unique, it means that they are using these songs to send messages to other species of birds, which would sound something like kind of like a warning or a back off kind of signal to other birds. So if a red-winged blackbird was singing or using an alarm call in a marshy area, it would let not only other species of birds know that they're kind of taking over the area, but also other individual red-winged blackbirds, which is pretty cool. It's like a secret language. The second thing to talk about is calls, and it's something that I hear a lot too, and I'm pretty sure that everybody would hear them a little, maybe a little bit more than songs, especially um, in the summertime. So these are usually short and sweet little messages. Um, usually the number one reason that calls are used are for kind of an alarm system. It tells other birds in the area that there is something to watch out for. So it could be a predator, it could be maybe a human walking a little too close to their nest, it could be something weird is going on and they just want to let everyone know. So an alarm is a really fast and simple way for a bird to let everyone know that something is going on and it may not be something we want to be a part of. That's why it's short and sweet. So it, there's it's no frills, it's really quick and easy and gets the message across. The second reason a bird might use a call is to keep the flock together. So if there are really, really large groups of birds hanging around a similar area, it's not really that likely to see everyone kind of crammed onto one branch or everyone kind of just 
huddled together super, super close, right? Especially if they're doing some foraging or looking for food. So they could be spread all over an area. These alarm calls would make it a lot easier for them to keep track of where everyone is. And being able to kind of chirp or send out a little tweet every once in a while gives the birds that are in the flock a good idea of the area that's covered, as well as if they're getting ready to fly off and head to a new location, letting everyone know maybe where the location is, how fast they're moving, and all other things that I don't think scientists have quite figured out yet. So that's pretty cool. Um, next, I'm going to be talking about bird anatomy. So I've... thinking about birds and the way that they sing can be a very, very complex topic, but I think it's really cool to understand a little bit about how their bodies work because it's pretty special. We don't have the same vocal system as they do. I don't think any other animal, or at least vertebrates or animals with backbones have them at all. They're kind of a, an anomaly or a mystery in science, which is pretty, pretty cool, especially if it's used for song. And there is an organ called a syrinx that birds have, specifically songbirds or passerines. And this organ is shaped kind of like an upside down Y, and it splits from one tube, that's the trachea, and two tubes into the bronchus. And I actually threw together a simple diagram to show off what's going on here. So I'll show you right here. So as I said before, it looks kind of like an upside down Y, and it starts off with the trachea, which is closer to the bird's mouth, and then as it goes through the bird, it splits off into these two different pathways, and each of these are a bronchus, and these bronchus lead into the bird's lungs, and birds also have pretty cool respiratory systems, or the way that they breathe. It's also pretty unique in the animal kingdom. So. The way that birds sing is that the air from their lungs travels up through the bronchi and out their mouths. But the really cool part about this is these two sides can be independently controlled, which helps a lot with the way that they sing. And it's how we get a lot of the really complicated and beautiful songs that a lot of birds are famous for. So here we can note that there are these well, at least on this side. I wanted to draw this side not showing this little membrane here, but on this side, there is a little membrane that flaps kind of up and down as the bird is sending air up and up out of its mouth to sing. And depending on how fast these membranes move, it's on both sides, it controls what sounds the birds are making and how quickly the song is coming out, among a ton of other things. But it's really cool to know that because of this split airway and this kind of split system here, the birds can sing two notes at once, they can sing rising and falling notes at the same time, they can sing different sounds coming out of each side, and the coolest thing to me is that they can breathe in through one side and sing out of the other. That's pretty impressive. I know that um, as I play clarinet, and it's really, really cool to be able to see really, really professional musicians breathe in at the same time and breathe out, and it's a really complicated process, but I thought of that immediately. It was a cool connection, because it only makes sense for birds to be able to sing for so long and for such a complicated song to come out if they'd be able to breathe in and out through one side and sing from the other. It's pretty cool. So now I think I will get into some bird call ID or bird song ID. I am going to be walking through a few, a few birds, and these birds are the names of the groups of the camp teams this year. So. The first one I have is a robin, and American robins, they're the state bird of Wisconsin. I see them everywhere, I'm sure lots of other people do too. They are these little birds, and they have a red breast, and their bodies are kind of black on the head, and down their back, and their tail feathers, 
and the underneath of their tail is white, and they have a cute little yellow beak. And I'm going to play, first I'll play a song, and this song is something that gets stuck in my head every spring. It's such a catchy song. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to get to know this sound and how it could be easier to identify it, something to remember it by, and then we'll listen to it one more time so that it sticks. So the song, I usually think of the word cheerily, so it sounds like they're going cheerily, 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 or cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. And they repeat this and it's kind of like a whistling noise, so it's kind of like a dancing whistling. Cheerly, 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 cheerly. I'll play it one more time. Cheerly, cheerly. So that's a robin song. That's what a robin is using to attract mates and let other birds know that they are in robin territory. The second I'm going to play is an alarm call. So this is the one when I talked about the birds, it's shorter and birds would use it to kind of let other robins know about predators or to just kind of communicate across long distances. And it's a lot shorter, you'll notice, like we said, and it sounds pretty different. Let's take a listen. So it's almost more like a peeping sound. It's yeep or peep, and it's repetitive, and a lot of the time the speed can vary, or the number of peeps or yeeps that they're letting out can vary depending on the amount of threat that they're noticing. So I like to think of them as peeps or yeeps. Let's listen one more time. One more. They're so short. And sometimes in between, you can hear a little bit of extra stuff added on. It's kind of like a little kind of personalization, where they could be making little extra squawking sounds, or they could be clapping their beaks, or it could be a lot of different things for robins. And lastly, they have this different kind of alarm call. It sounds a little bit like laughing. It's kind of long and drawn out and it's another way for them to kind of communicate either aggression towards other robins or let everyone know about what's going on around them. I'll play that one now. I like to think of it as a laugh. It's really easy if I remember it as a robin laugh. So the next bird I want to go through is the chickadee. And I think this is another very classic spring bird for around here. It's one of the birds that wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> so their song is really easy to recognize and it's really easy to remember and sing. So let's take a listen. So it's two whistles, and one is higher and one is lower, and it's just repeated over and over again. And I remember it as Phoebe, almost like the name, Phoebe, and birds will often use this to communicate. You can hear Phoebe's going back and forth, sometimes it's across the street, it can be all the way across the park, but it's very easy to recognize if you remember the words Phoebe. And then, they also have a very famous call, so famous that they are named after it, the chickadee alarm call. So I'm going to play it, and then you might laugh because it sounds very familiar. So 
do it. They do it. Chick a dee dee dee. Chick a dee dee dee. And this chick a dee, especially the dee at the end, is repeated according to how much threat the bird is experiencing or how dangerous something is that's happening. So if you hear a chick a dee, chick a dee dee, it might be a human walking down the street. Or if you hear a long string of D's after the chick a dee dee dee, it could be something more like a, a hawk in the area. So those are very, very simple and very easy to remember. And another very simple one, but not any less fun, is the crow. So crows aren't songbirds, but they do have a very, very, very well-known call. And I'm sure that a lot of you know it already. But it's so fun to listen to that I'm going to play it anyways. Very simple. Um, it's been noted by some scientists that crows will often add different things in between, kind of like a robin does, and they'll do some beak snapping or clapping their beaks together to make this loud snap sound, or they'll add some kind of grunts or little chirps in between. And I think scientists have said something along the lines of that it's another way for them to distinguish maybe aggression level, or what kind of predator may be around. That's also pretty cool. And the last thing, the last bird I want to talk about is the goldfinch. So goldfinches are, I think they're a Midwestern favorite. I talk to people who love birds that are around me, and we all just love the goldfinch's song. It's very beautiful and sweet sounding. However, it sometimes it kind of it might be hard to identify, but luckily for us, there are other songs that kind of add on to the easiness that it is to recognize them, and I'll play those ones after. But first, I want to listen to this great Goldfinch song. So. It's really complicated. Um, it almost sounds a little bit random, but if we take a closer look at the song, it's actually a bunch of different sounds that are repeated and put into different patterns. So a lot of this is some back and forth, going back to the beginning. It's almost like the way that a song is constructed, how there are verses and choruses, but it might not be that organized for a goldfinch. And a really cool fact about goldfinch song is that over their lives, they can learn different patterns and sounds and rhythms from other goldfinches, and they can kind of add them to their own song. So by the end of the goldfinch's life, they might have heard hundreds and hundreds of different goldfinches sing, and their song would be totally different than when they were first learning to sing, or when they were first starting to sing. So it's really, really interesting because goldfinches aren't really the only birds that do this kind of teaching or tutoring. Um, a lot of birds have a very awkward song, awkward song when they first start or they first learn to sing, and it takes practice. Um, you can often tell if a bird is either very young or if they're from another area if you listen to the way that they sing their song. And once you get to know the songs really, really well, it'll be a little bit easier for you to make those distinguishments. And Lastly, since I said that the song is a little bit harder to identify for those of us who are new at bird song ID, their flight calls and alarm calls are totally easy to identify. So let's take a listen to their flight calls. So it's a series of some short high whistles. and. Usually it's around four, and what I use and a lot of other people use to identify their flight call, or it's something that you hear when they're flying from tree to tree, this song is potato chip, potato chip, potato chip. But let's listen to it again. So 
potato chip, potato chip. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, lastly, they have some really, really pretty alarm calls. I, usually, alarm calls sound kind of harsh, or they kind of sound kind of loud, and maybe even a little bit irritating if you're trying to sleep, but they have a really cute one that sounds like them saying, baby, baby, and I'll play it now. Baby, baby, I'll play it one more time. Oh, I lost it. So it's a baby, baby, and I love Goldfin song. Um, if you get a chance, especially during early spring, they love to sing all the time, especially in the morning, like I said. <laughs> so you should get out there and listen. And just because it's not springtime doesn't mean you can't go out and hear birds sing. Birds love to sing. They sing all year round. It might be harder to hear some birds sing, but they do sing. So. I think that's all that I had for us today. Um, if there are any questions or, like I said, nature stories or anything that you would like to share with me, feel free to comment under the video and I will try to address them and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, like I said before, we do free programming and our camp is completely free. So if you're interested in any of the material, I'll go in and I'll put a link to this week's um, materials for camp so that you can take part of it too even if you didn't think that you wanted to before and welcome if you decide to do it welcome I also want to note that um, if you really really like and appreciate the stuff that we're doing here at Madison Audubon including these summer camp videos please think about donating to our cause um, all the information will be on our website madisonaudubon.org thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time Bye.